and welcome. This is Talk RX with Dr. Neha. And today I'd like to share a story, which is about the day that I knew this work in communication was my calling and how it could change the world. The title is How Honest Communication Heals Workplace Drama. And even though it sounds like it's a story about work, I want you to know it's actually a story about life. So I hope you enjoy this as much as I do. So there was this physician who had joined the hospital uh, a few years prior to this story taking place. And he had this introverted, introverted nature and a matter of fact way that rubbed up against the nurses and physicians. Now, he didn't really notice the wake he sometimes left in his path, but personally, I thought he was one of the smartest physicians I knew. I loved consulting with him because he was like this human encyclopedia of the latest trials and research. And his mannerisms reminded me of one of my favorite professors. So I adored him. Now, it was our first day of an eight week workshop that was titled Self-Care in Healthcare. And I was leading this for a group of physicians, nurses, and staff to try and improve the teamwork and staff communication. Now, I saw the horror on one of the nurses' faces when she said, you mean Mackie's in this group? There is no way I'm gonna be in this group with him here. And she crossed her arms in front of her chest and she just sat down and rolled her eyes. One of us needs to leave and it's not gonna be me. I thought to myself, well, this is what a mind-body communication group is all about. This is about healing workplace drama. I think she's in the right place. Maybe it'll be a chance to bridge from one person to the other, who knows? So I buckled up and realized I was in for a ride. So now just as I was beginning the group, uh, Dr. Mackey scurried in and he sat down in the last open seat in the circle of chairs and his face was pretty expressionless because he was still mentally reviewing his notes from the patients he had just finished seeing. Now, I began creating the rules of confidentiality and setting the guidelines for how we would use a talking stone and ask each person to focus on him or herself. It may be tempting, I said, to hope that somebody else gets it or learns how to communicate, but I'd like each one of you to focus on yourselves. And if each one of you does that, we'll be sure that everyone in this room is accounted for, and trust me, this process will work. Now you can imagine the tension in the group because it was palpable to me. They're, they couldn't believe that I would put doctors and nurses and staff in the same group and then ask them to be honest like this. So as I was enrolling them in the workshop, they had expressed their hesitation. So their comments started flooding in my mind, right? Shouldn't the doctors and nurses be in separate groups? What happens to all the rules of power and hierarchy that happen in the hospital? Whose idea was this anyway? So I just took a slow deep breath and reminded myself that based on feedback, I could always change my direction. And that's something I want you to remember when you're thinking about a new endeavor. So as I sent the talking stone around the circle and asked questions, I noticed that Dr. Mackey would give one word answers as he would pass the stone. Yep. Nope. And I prompted the group to finish the sentence which was, if I could speak from the heart, I would say. With a stone cold face, Dr. Mackey answered, well, I don't typically speak from the heart. I speak from the head and mouth. Thank you. And he passed the stone to his left. I just sighed as it became painfully clear that this was gonna be one of my toughest crowds so far. Now, a few weeks in to us doing this group, a conflict arose between two of the other participants and I noticed Dr. Mackey's face getting flushed. So once I helped the two of them navigate through their issue, I asked him how he was doing. Fine, he responded, completely emotionless. Did I, did something happen while those two were talking? I asked like, did you feel any physical signals in your body? Uh, is anything going on for you? No, he replied. Well, I noticed that your face was flushed and your ears turned red. Can you actually feel that as it's happening? He just took a deep breath and replied, no. So I reached into my bag and I pulled out a green fabric heart which is filled with lavender. 
And I asked him to hold on to it during each group from then on. And I said, you know, next time, Dr. Mackey, next time I ask you if you can feel your body and you can't, could you please focus on your hand and tell me at the very least if you can feel the weight of that green heart in your hand? He hesitated for a minute and then he said, sure, that sounds easy enough. So the next time one of the nurses was speaking, she mentioned her divorce and that it was impacting her ability to be present with her patients and enjoy her work. I noticed Dr. Mackey's face turning bright red again, so I asked the nurse if she could just pause for a moment. Hey, Dr. Mackey, I'm wondering what you're feeling in your body right now. Nothing, he replied. And as I pointed to the green heart in his hand, he continued, uh, uh, oh, uh, I feel this heart in my hand. I hear, feel this heart pillow. Do you? I asked. Everybody else, please take a nice deep breath in and out and just soften your abdomen. You've all learned how to allow yourself to relax into your seat and notice your physical body. Does your physical body feel tense or relaxed? Just pay attention to yourself and allow him to pay attention to his own body. So then I turned my attention back to Dr. Mackey and I said, what are you feeling right now, physically in your body? And he responded, well, this time I can feel the heart in my hand and I can feel my feet on the ground. We all sat up at attention. This was the most he had said in four weeks. And I can feel my stomach turning and constriction in my chest. Now I feel a numbness in my arms and some tingling. I haven't felt this since my own divorce. My wife left me because she said I work all the time and I didn't show up in our marriage. My patients always love that I know the best treatments and I care about them. It's probably better this way. I hope she finds happiness. I have to say though, it's awfully lonely for me, even though I'm not at home, to know that she's not there anymore. We all sat in silence and disbelief after this unexpected burst of accountability, of tenderness, of vulnerability. It was very clear that this was an unusual experience for Dr. Mackey. He turned to me and said, Neha, what's in this green heart anyway? I don't normally talk about personal things like this, at least not out loud. I just took a deep breath in and said, you know, what you just shared was perfect. That green heart is the gateway to getting you back in your body and feeling again and letting those physical sensations guide you. I think you've been relying pretty heavily on your head. He just smiled. And as the group continued on one by one, each person opened up in a similar fashion. And they discovered that Dr. Mackey wasn't the only one showing up at the hospital every day as a superhero who hid behind a white coat while tightly guarding his own heart. They were too. And together they laughed and they cried and they listened and they shared to one another with one another. Now week eight arrived, which was the final week. And I asked everyone to gather in a circle and I began. I believe that some of our deepest desires in the world are to be heard and feel valued. We give as healthcare providers such an incredible amount to our patients. And this has been a time to slow down and share our hearts with one another to recharge ourselves and learn. We're going to end with something called a gratitude circle. And this is an exercise of giving and receiving feedback. Now the person holding the talking stone will be receiving gratitude from the rest of you. And I want to ask everyone a question here. Does anyone want to hear something that isn't true? The room was silent. Good, because I don't want you to fill in the silence by saying something that isn't true to someone else. So if there is actually silence as we go around this circle of gratitude, I want you to trust if you're holding that stone that it's because people are thinking of how to word what they'd like to say to you rather than deciding in your head that it's because there isn't anything for them to actually say that's good. So for those of you on the receiving end, 
Your only job is to notice that the physical sensations in your body might be speaking up. Your job is to practice some soft belly breathing and believe that what's being said to you is true. Allow yourself to take in that very thing you want most, which is to be appreciated. And all you have to say is thank you. So we slowly began moving around the circle and we finally came to Dr. Mackey. He held the green fabric heart in one hand and the talking stone in the other. He blinked quickly a few times, almost as if he was nervous to hear what was coming. And one by one, each person spoke of how this time together had helped him or her discover a man who seemed to hide behind his journals and knowledge as a way to connect and that they loved the bright soul that he was. So they spoke of his beauty and his gentleness. They referred back to his vulnerability and sharing about his divorce. And then that very nurse who had despised even being in the same room and breathing the same oxygen as him at the beginning of class blurted out, Dr. Mackey, I have to say, I was wrong about you. You really do care and you actually do have a huge heart. Dr. Mackey looked a little bit surprised and taken aback. And he answered, I had no idea I hid it so well. Silence fell over the room and tears just began to stream down everyone's cheeks. And at that moment, I had this deep sense that this work was my calling. I knew I was gonna dedicate my life to building these invisible bridges between our hearts that reveal that we're much more similar than we are different. And I can even feel myself right now. Uh, each time I tell this story, uh, it's really deeply personal for me and it really has so much meaning. So when you encounter a challenging emotion or situation in yourself or others, just pause and take a few soft, deep belly breaths. And if you want to turn around a challenging relationship, it's time to get curious, not furious. That nurse, she stayed in that group and stayed curious. And lastly, if you spend more time in your head than your heart, this sentence is what you need to finish to connect the two. If I could speak from the heart, I would say. So if you've enjoyed this vlog, I'd love it if you came down to the comments and told me the impact it had on you. I'd also love to hear any of your stories about how you were able to use communication to connect to somebody else. And it can be in the workplace or uh, in your personal life, either way. And if you'd like to drop me a question, please tweet, uh, tweet me at hashtag Ask Dr. Neha, A-S-K-D-O-C-T-O-R-N-E-H-A, or shoot me one of the, your comments below. I look forward to hearing what you thought.